Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles. Today's video is a more serious one. It is a more um, conservation wildlife themed video. I haven't done a video like this in kind of a while. Um, a lot of my recent videos have been more reptile geared, so I was kind of overdue for a kind of wildlife conservation type of video. So this is a video that I've been wanting to make. It's actually three videos I've been wanting to make that I decided to mash into one video in light of recent events. And for today's video, I did wear my Arm the Animals sweatshirt. I felt like it was appropriate considering they're all about helping animals and their logo is actually a gorilla holding a gun. So I thought that was kind of appropriate for today's video. So I am wearing that. I always have my Arm the Animals link in the description if you want to go check them out. I was going to wear my t-shirt with a gorilla flipping the bird, but I decided to t step it back because it's a serious video. So I just wore my Arm the Animals sweatshirt. So for anyone that is new to my channel, I spent the last 20 years or so of my life thinking I was going to be a zookeeper. I spent the last four years of my life going to college for animal behavior ecology and conservation. And I spent the last six months working as a zoo educator. So zoos, wildlife, and conservation are something I hold near and dear to my heart. I'm not working at the zoo now, I did leave the zoo field. However, I left to work at my local nature center here in New York, and a lot of species in New York State are actually endangered. New York State is actually home to about 53 endangered animals, about 37 threatened animals, and about 58 or so special concern animals. So. It's not like I'm not still involved in conservation and wildlife just because I'm not at a zoo. And part of the reason that I left the zoo field was so that I could find a job that would pay me more so I could live more comfortably and be able to travel to see animals in the wild and to be able to travel and visit organizations and sanctuaries and experience wildlife outside of a zoo where I feel like I could be a little more involved or do a little bit more for conservation. So just because I'm not working at a zoo anymore and I'm not a zookeeper doesn't mean I'm not going to be still putting out wildlife conservation type of videos because that's still going to be a huge part of my channel. So now that we've kind of covered that for all the new people to my channel, we're gonna get into the video. So today's video we're gonna be talking about the dangers of lanterns, balloons, and fireworks. It's kind of tis the season for those because of New Year's. So I am going to talk about all three one at a time, starting with lanterns. And basically, all I have to say is let's leave the floating lanterns to Disney. Tangled, y'all know, I've said it a million times, Tangled is my favorite movie in the entire universe. Floating lanterns are super pretty when they're animated, they're not so pretty when they're burning down a primate house. Now, this has been huge in the news since New Year's, so I'm sure most of you have heard of this event. If you're on this video, it's probably because you heard of this event. So a zoo in Germany, the Krefeld Zoo. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. I tried to learn how to say it, but everything I found online was severely German, and I didn't want to butcher it. The Krefeld Zoo in Germany just after midnight on New Year's Day, unfortunately lost over 30 animals in their primate building because of lanterns that people let go in honor of the New Year. Now with zoos being near and dear to my heart, I absolutely could not believe it when I saw these posts in several zookeeper groups I'm a part of, and I was just at a loss for words. And then you know, I wanted to give it time to see what they could find out if the people that let them go would come forward. So I waited on this video to see what happened with all of that and just because it was super tragic. So just a couple days to process um, because I was absolutely furious. I couldn't even imagine what it must be like for their keepers to be the caretakers of those animals, to be the keepers of those primates and to have lost almost all but two chimps. Two chimps were the only animals that survived that fire. They lost several endangered apes 
including Europe's oldest gorilla, a silverback gorilla named Masa, who was 48 years old. Luckily, they did have a gorilla house next door, housing a family of, I believe, seven gorillas, all of which survived. That building was fine, thankfully. Unfortunately, the primate building that also housed um, birds and bats, completely destroyed. Now, if you haven't been following the news, um, three women did come forward taking responsibility. It was a mother and her two adult daughters who didn't realize that lanterns were actually illegal in Germany. They've been illegal for almost a decade now, or a decade now. Um, they wrote on the inside of the lanterns kind of well wishes for the new year and let them go. So the police were able to match their handwriting to the handwriting inside of the lanterns to make sure that they were in fact the ones that did release them and to confirm that their story was true. And it's amazing, it's great that they came forward, kudos to them, because I certainly could not live with the guilt of knowing that I just burned over 30 animals in a zoo, including several endangered species. And probably absolutely leading all these zookeepers to heartbreak, not to mention the people that live locally to the zoo that are regular zoo-goers that love going and seeing these animals. So kudos to them for coming forward and taking responsibility. It is unfortunate that they didn't realize that the laws were in place making these lanterns illegal. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes that happens. They bought them online, so it wasn't somewhere local. They ordered them online. Um, saw them, thought they were cool, probably, type of thing. So that happened. So in light of that tragic event, that is why I'm making this video today. So obviously we're starting off with why lanterns are dangerous for wildlife and for the environment. So the number one thing to keep in mind, and this goes for balloons too, is whatever goes up has to come back down. So they might look really pretty going up, it might be ceremonial, releasing them into the sky, but at some point they do have to come back down. And a lot of times that is when the damage is done. So the obvious thing with the lanterns is fire. When they come back down, typically that's a good way to start a fire somewhere. Now in this case, it was a primate building in a zoo that could have easily been someone's house. So these lanterns are not only dangerous to wildlife and to the environment, but just in general, because they're a good way for fires to start. Not to mention when it comes back down and the fire isn't still lit, it's litter. And a lot of them are being advertised as biodegradable now. Even the biodegradable ones take time to break down. Some of them are now saying, like the paper ones I think, say that they break down in a couple days, but their framework does not. The lantern outer papery part, that will break down, sure, it's biodegradable, whatever. But you have to remember, there's also the framework inside of it. Usually there's bamboo, there's metal support systems to keep, so that the lantern can keep its shape. And those take a lot longer to break down. A lot of the times these lanterns floating in the sky can spook wildlife and sometimes birds can get caught in that framework. So I actually saw a picture, um, I'll put it right here, that I saw going around on Instagram of a barn owl that actually got caught in the framework of a lantern and died. And it's absolutely tragic. Like, it's just so sad. So those are some reasons that lanterns are not the greatest and why we should really leave them to Disney. So now we're going to talk about balloons and how they are dangerous to wildlife. But before I get into that, I did want to put out a warning that I will be using images from Balloons Blow Don't Let Them Go, a nonprofit organization trying to raise awareness on the dangers of balloons and whatnot. So if you don't want to see graphic images of animals that were affected by balloons, um, you can skip over this part. I'll put a timestamp for when I start talking about fireworks. Um, but I will be putting their website in the description below, so I highly recommend checking out Balloons Blow Don't Let Them Go because, like I said, their mission is to raise awareness and they provide a lot of good information on their site. So next we're going to talk about balloons 
And similar to lanterns, balloons floating in the sky can be kind of spooky for animals, especially birds that are flying around. And like lanterns, they have to come down at some point. And when they come down, they're extremely dangerous to wildlife. And they're coming down in the ocean or even on the ground, animals will consume them. A balloon in the ocean looks very similar to a jellyfish for a sea turtle. Balloons that fall into the grass on land are very attractive to birds. They can be mistaken for food by things like sheep. When these animals ingest these balloons, it blocks their digestive tract and leads to starvation. Not to mention a lot of balloons that are flying in the sky have strings attached to them. And these strings are a good way for animals to choke. It's a good way for animals to get trapped because it can wrap around them and ta get tangled up. Um, so a lot of birds get tangled up in these strings. And just like lanterns, balloons are being sold as biodegradable now. And these biodegradable ones take years to break down. Biodegradable. So they're not really biodegradable. They take years to break down. Sure, maybe less years than a legit latex balloon, but the biodegradable ones still take years, which is plenty of time for animals to come along and find it and have a little snack. So now we're gonna finish up the video talking about fireworks. Now fireworks are a big thing that in recent years have become kind of very controversial. A lot of people are disliking them now just due to their pets at home. Many dogs are scared of fireworks, but imagine what it's like for the animals that are actually out there with the fireworks. So a firework going off in the sky can reach about 190 decibels. If you think about animals, a lot of animals have better hearing than we do, and we can suffer hearing damage at about 75 decibels. So imagine how terrifying that must be for animals out there that have no idea what's going on. So that loud noise can cause a lot of fear, stress, anxiety. It can cause animals to try to run and hide. And so during this time, there's a lot of reports saying that animals are much more active during this time trying to seek shelter. And there's a lot more incidents of like deer and animals out in the road getting hit by cars because they're running around stressed as all hell, scared to death. And there's just an increase of car accidents and animals dying because of it. There's also many reports of the loud noises causing birds and small mammals to leave their nests, to flee and try to save themselves, and leaving their young on their own, usually not able to survive. And the ones that are reported returning are usually malnourished or completely just freaked out and takes weeks for them to kind of calm down and come back to normal because they're just Fireworks are just such a traumatic experience for them. The fireworks also cause a huge panic and disorientation for birds, and this has led to increased amounts of them flying into windows and buildings or flying out to sea too far to be able to turn around and orient themselves to come back. And just like the other two, there is litter involved with fireworks, and many animals will get tangled up in the remains of large fireworks or they'll ingest pieces they find on the ground from fireworks. Not to mention the smoke from fireworks can damage a bird's respiratory system. The debris can affect waterways. And many firecrackers have actually been deemed poisonous when they explode because they release particles such as fine dust that are actually toxic to inhale. So I found a really interesting article on animalethics.org that actually goes through and explains how fireworks affect different species of animals from dogs to cats to horses it kind of describes how it affects each one and it's actually really interesting so i'll link that in the description below along with the balloons blow don't let them go website and the most recent article i can find on the event at the germany zoo so i want to end this video talking about some things you can do as an alternative to fireworks lanterns and balloons because a lot of times people use these for celebrations and for like New Year's or parties, funerals, weddings, they usually use them to celebrate something. And there's so many other things you can do. You know, you can 
plant flowers, you can release flower petals, like float flower petals. A lot of people light candles because that's something you can just blow out when you're all done. You can organize an environmental cleanup, which I think is actually my favorite idea because I was kind of searching through the internet for different ideas. And that was my favorite I came up with was instead of going out and releasing balloons, schedule an environmental cleanup in honor of somebody. You know, use reusable banners and flags. And if you want to release something into the sky, blow bubbles. Get lots of bubbles for everyone and have everyone blow bubbles. So I hope this video kind of exposed some modern day issues for you guys. Maybe you learned something you didn't already know. Maybe you changed your mind about these modern practices. But really the best thing that we can do is to just keep teaching, keep spreading awareness, keep telling people, you know, this isn't okay, this is why. And here's some alternatives, here's some other things that you can actually do instead that won't hurt the environment and the wildlife. So leave me a comment, let me know what your favorite alternative is to balloons and lanterns and fireworks. It could be something I mentioned at the end of this video, or it could just be something I didn't mention, some maybe an idea you have or something you've done. Let me know in the comments, that way other people can also see some good ideas for alternatives to these harmful practices of celebration. Don't forget, I'm going to put all those links in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you for the next video.